So I'm up here eating my lovely fruit salad for breakfast and um, just finished working out. Uh, Sean T. Asylum boy, ex-trainer, no joke. Woo! But anyway, uh, I was reading this morning, John 5. Uh, I'm sitting here with my Bible open and I uh, was reading John 5. And um, in, the, in these verses, it talks about the relationship that Jesus had with God. And, um, and also that Jesus was teaching on the Sabbath. And the fact that Jesus was teaching on the Sabbath, you know, is big because uh, in their culture, you know, you didn't work on the Sabbath. And he also tells a, a, a man uh, that was struck for like 38 years uh, to, uh, to take up his bed, you know, that he would be made whole because the man was waiting on someone to do it for him. And so, um, the man, you know, did as Jesus told him, and then he got up. And what I noticed is that, um, you know, in order for you to be made whole, there's an action that you have to do. So while you are praying uh, for help or praying for healing, that when you pray for healing, that there's an action that you that you have to take. And so I was having a conversation last night with a friend of mine, and she was sharing with me um you know, the, she she and a couple of her friends, um, you know, they used to be really tight. And then in the midst of it, um, a relationship uh, with a person of the opposite gender kind of sparked. And uh, because of secrecy and the way things went down, the, um, the uh, relationships between all of them kind of took, you know, it, it kind of strained the the uh, relationships between between everybody involved and you know as far as what happens between when you have interdependent relationships uh that that's another uh recording uh that we can deal with that excuse me at another time but um i will say that um the relationship when you are you know when you're getting to know somebody you know past friendship and more so in an intimate way in a relationship that when things happen and then a relationship comes to an end, it's not so easy to go back to being friends. I know a lot of times that that's what people people want to do, you know, that they want to go back to being friends. Hey, let's just be cool. Or even the people who got hurt say that they want to go back to being friends, and, and I know that we're cool. But the truth is, is that you can go back to being friends, but you just won't be able to go back to where you were. Okay, because a line has been crossed, uh, a barrier has been has been pushed, um, a depth have, has been reached that wasn't there before. So you can't just turn around and go back to being friends. You understand? And so one of the things, so what I want to do is just talk briefly about the steps that it takes. Because just like you have to forgive, you have to heal from the situation as well. And, you know, and I learned a lot in uh, in, in the kingdom of God, you know, things work in threes, but things also work in pairs. You know, healing and forgiveness is one of them. And so in order to forgive, like genuinely forgive, you have to heal. You don't heal by not paying attention to the to the situation. You don't heal by just saying, okay, it happened and then let's move on. You heal by first first earning or excuse me, excuse me, owning what actually happened. Like own what what went down, and a lot of times we get hurt because of our expectations. We don't we don't expect the people to do it. So if you were on the other end and you were the one that got hurt, the first thing that you want to do is you want to own what happened. You want to own that I got hurt in a situation that I was kind of uh, expecting not to get hurt in. That's the first thing. You got hurt in a situation that you didn't expect to get hurt in because this is your friend. You don't you don't expect your friend to do this to you. Um, and then be able and willing, if time allows or if the opportunity presents itself, to share it with your friend. Like tell them, let them know how you felt. Hey, you hurt my feelings. So a lot of times we, because pride gets in the way, we don't want to tell people that. Like we don't want to just come out and say it. That's a lot of times why people don't grow. And that's also why people don't move on and they, and, and they don't mature. And they think that not owning the situation is better. Yeah, not owning it is better because it allows you not to feel anything, but it doesn't really allow you to mature because you don't really push past where you are. Because then what ends up happening is you repeat what you did. So first, be willing to admit that you got hurt. Be able to share with the person 
if you can, that they hurt you. But the most important thing, and this is what's important, this is why relationship, like learning to grow in relationship with God is so important. Then the next thing you do is you need to own your part in what happened. And this is where sometimes people get it confused. They think it's important to share with the other person uh, what you did to me. But it's more important for you to own what you did in the situation. Own your own actions in the misunderstanding. Because when you own your own actions in the misunderstanding, you turn the mirror on yourself and then you look at what you did. And the reason you grow is because now you can identify as time goes on what you did and what you should not do in the future. And what that also does is that all then when you say that, that kind of turns the mirror on the friend too when you own that. Because then what that also shows the friend is it shows them their responsibility. Okay, in the friendship. But what we a lot of times want to do is we want the friend to feel how we feel. But it's really not important when it comes to growth and maturity that they feel how you feel. It's important to growth and maturity that you understand what you did. And then when you understand what you did, then that action, that act, you don't have to do it again. See, then if it happens from their own, it's a choice. You see what I'm saying? It's not... A mistake is a choice that you make. But the other thing is that the person who's on the other side, who maybe does not feel as much pain or doesn't feel the pain of being hurt, you have a responsibility as well. Your responsibility is to own the fact that you played a part in somebody getting hurt. So you can't just go back to just being friends. And I think that that's the misunderstanding that people have. You know, they go, oh, yeah, what's their problem? Let's just go back to being friends. You can't just go back to being friends, you see, because you've crossed a line. So what you have to do is be sensitive enough and have enough patience and understanding that this person is not where you are. And you can do that by understanding that you don't feel the way that they feel and don't feel guilty about it, but only you don't feel the way that they feel because you weren't where they were. You were not in the same space. You were not in the same place, but you did play a part in it. And when you can own that, then you can handle them coming to you and sharing with you what happened to them, how they feel. So to sum it all up, this is really about relationship. When you're in right relationship with God, you can own the good that you do, and you can also own the bad that you do. When you're in relationship with God, you don't have to be afraid of getting hurt and afraid of putting yourself out there because as long as God is guiding you, one thing that you will understand and one thing that you will really see is that people will be people, and not everybody does things the way that you do them. So don't put your expectations on other people. There you go.